Hi guys, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. In a previous video, I took a piece of tubing and I put some tube notches in there that were meant to be cut on a like fourth axis laser or water jet or plasma table. Uh, I get a lot of questions about what if you don't have one of those and you want to do sort of the same thing, but you want to use a paper template to do that. And wanting to know if that's possible or not. I'll put a link to that video, a card to that video, so you guys can go back and review that if you've never seen it. So there is a way to do this. The bad news is there's not a way to easily do this, and I haven't found a way that you can do it using the pipe command. But I wanted to kind of show you how we could do this with sheet metal tools and then uh, create the flat pattern. And I also want to, at the end, show you tools that Autodesk already owns and has implemented in Inventor, uh, the things that would make using the tube command to do this a cinch to do. And we'll put a link so that you guys can go out to the idea station for Fusion 360 and vote for Autodesk to add some more sheet metal functionality into the product. So with that said, let's get going on how we could draw uh, a piece of sheet metal tubing that could be unfolded so that we could create a paper template to cut with either a plasma cutter by hand or even, you know, even just using a, a grinder or something to do it. So I'm going to start out by sketching. Uh, I, so I should switch to the sheet metal environment. It doesn't really matter for the sketch part, but we're gonna go to the sketch menu and I'm gonna sketch an arc and I'm gonna choose to do a center point arc. And I'm gonna choose my front plane. This is my center. Now, what you sort of have to try to figure out is where you want this seam to be when your design is done. You'll see what I mean when we get done with this, but I'm just gonna kind of pick a point. So I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna rotate around and I wanna come back almost so that it's sort of touching but I don't want it to touch. So that's close enough for what I what it is that I don't want to do. I'm gonna add some dimensions to this, and then we're gonna add some construction geometry to finish it out. So I'm gonna start the dimension command, and I'm gonna click on this uh, arc, and because it's not a full circle, Fusion is going to give me a radius. I want this to be a diameter, so pretty easily I'm gonna be able to right click and choose the diameter option instead. I'm just going to place that and I'm going to say I want this diameter to be two inches. So it's going to be a piece of uh, tubing that's going to be about two inches in diameter. Now, I want to sort of control where this gap is going to be. And the way that I could do that is I could turn on my construction and I could draw a line from the point to the origin and then back to this point. And then I want to draw one more point from the center. We're going to make that go straight down. This is going to be using my symmetric reference in the next step. So I'm going to add a symmetry constraint between this line and this line and I want to make it symmetrical to this vertical construction line. Okay, so now that I've got those in there, the next thing that I'm going to do is add a sketch dimension between these two. We're going to call this an angle dimension. Now for paper, you can go pretty thin on this. Um, I'm just going to do like five degrees so you guys can see what's going on here. So there's a five degree rip in this piece of paper or in this tube that we're going to end up with, I should say. So we'll stop the sketch, and now what we're ready to do, I'm gonna to go to an isometric view here for a second, is we're ready to go and create a flange out of this. This is gonna be called the contour flange. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, drag this the direction I want it to go, and tell it how long I want it to be. So maybe I'll say I want this piece to be five inches. The other important thing that I wanna look at is, do I want the tubing to go on the outside or on the inside? Now, I want my maximum wall, uh, the diameter to be two inches. So you can see it's going on the outside of my sketch, so I wanna flip it to be the side too. So now it's going on the inside. And with that, um, we can choose a rule. There's my steel inch rule that I've grabbed, um, and we're ready to move on to the next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And now I wanna cut the tubing notch on here. So I'm gonna use a plane at an angle, and the I wanna use this edge, this x-axis edge as my angle, and I'm gonna rotate this about Oh, let's go with negative 20 degrees and click OK. So now that I've got that, I can go ahead and I can sketch a circle, center diameter circle. This is going to represent my notch. Um, don't trust when you see this origin right there, thinking that that's where the origin point really is. Uh, my origin's actually somewhere more to the left and probably down. So what I'm going to do before I draw that circle is I'm going to do P for project, or you can find that from the sketch menu. I'm gonna to go to the origin and I'm gonna find the zero point and click on it and click OK. Now there you can see that that's the real origin. This is the kind of assumed origin of the sketch, but that's where the real origin of the part is at. 
So we'll go circle, center diameter circle. I'm going to click that point, drag it out. And for the diameter of this, I want this to be two inches. And I'm going to stop the sketch. Now I need to extrude this, but I can't just extrude this right now, or it's going to be a, a solid extrusion that's going to cut everything. So I'm going to switch to the patch environment for a minute. And we're going to do an extrude here. Grab this area. Let's say we want to do a symmetrical extrude, and I'll just pull this so it's through everything. So now that I've got that done, I don't really need to see it anymore. Um, I can just go to my bodies folder, or my construction folder, I guess. Nope, bodies. And we'll turn that we'll turn that body off that we just created. All right, so I can, I can stay in the patch surface, that'd be fine. But what I want to do is I want to modify, and I want to choose the split the face, grab this base, and then the splitting tool is going to be that body that I just created. Go ahead and hit OK. Now I can right click and choose press pull, grab that area, and I want to... I want to extrude it the thickness or press pull at the thickness of my sheet metal part. And I know that's negative 0.1 or 0.1 is what the thickness is, but I want to go negative 0.1 on that and hit OK. And there's part of our split. I'll do one more split. So we'll say modify uh, split face. This time we'll do the outer face, grab that same splitting tool, click OK. And there you can see that we have just that little bit right there that might need to come off. Now, if you're doing this with uh, for a paper template, uh, you might not even have to go with this step. You could probably stop right here and trace your template on there and use the grinder. You can be probably as close as you need to get. So I'll say minus 0.1 again and click OK. And now we have, um, we have our tube notch coped. So we're ready to, because we did this with sheet metal tools, we're ready to fold this right away. So I'm just going to go back to the sheet metal. Um, and I'm going to use the outside as my stationary face. So I'm just going to choose modify and create flat pattern. Vision wants to know what's my stationary face. I'm going to select that and hit OK. And there you see that we get um, what that cut would look like. Now I want to caution you a couple things that you need to change about your sheet metal rolls that are going to be important for this method. Um, if I were to go and measure that edge right there, my total length is 6.19592. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to activate the flat pattern and we're going to check that same edge again. If I measure that edge again, you can see it's significantly shorter than what it was in the folded state. And that's because Fusion is applying a K factor, which is how much the material is going to stretch as it's uh, formed into the piece that it needs to be. In our example, we don't need this to be formed at all. So instead of having a K factor of whatever the default here is 0.44, we want to choose a K factor of one. So what I've already done um, is I've already created a rule. I'm just gonna go edit it. And I have the exact same rule. Uh, I copied it from it. The only thing I changed is I changed the K factor to be one on this part. So it's gonna not deform the material at all. Hit okay. And now you can see that uh, my rule is updated and my flat pattern's out of date. I can just uh, update the flat pattern and now let's go and activate that. So if I inspect this and click on this edge, now you see that we get the same 6.19592 um, that we had when it was folded up. I'll exit it, let's check this out one more time. So inspect, click on that edge, and there you can see we get the same dimension right there. So that K factor one is gonna be sort of critical uh, if you wanna get an accurate paper template. Now. If you want to print this out, you could either export this out to a DXF file if you have access to a program that does DXFs, or else you're going to have to create a flat pattern drawing of, uh, of this model in the flattened state, and you're going to put it on your sheet in a one-to-one -one scale, and then when you print your sheet out, you'll just have to cut, you know, cut that little uh, end of the tube out and wrap it around your tube and then go ahead and cut it. So I hope that helped. Um, Stay tuned for a minute if you want. We're going to look at some of the tools that Inventor has that make doing this job much easier than what it is in Fusion with less thought and less uh, planning ahead. Okay, here I am in Autodesk Inventor 2019, and let's see how we can draw that same cope tube and the more robust functional tools that Inventor has available for creating the flat pattern of that. Um, I'm in an Inventor part file, and I'm going to start up by creating a 2D sketch on the front face, and I'm going to start up by sketching a couple of circles. So I'll draw a circle from the center point out, and when I draw another circle that way as well. I'm going to add some dimensions 
So the outer diameter circle is going to be two inches. And then between these two circles, it's going to be 0.1 inches, just like we were doing in Fusion. So I'll stop that sketch, zoom out a little bit, and now I'm ready to extrude this. I'm gonna start the extrude command, click my profile, say I wanna go the other way, and we're gonna extrude five inches. I need to create a work plane, and you'll see in Inventor we have different plane options, um, just like we do in Fusion. However, in Inventor, if I know how to use the plane command, I don't have to choose the specific plane options. Um, as long as I know what Inventor wants for the inputs, it'll create the proper plane that I want. So I wanna go through uh, in my origin folder, and I wanna use this plane right here as uh, my guide plane, and I wanna make it around this edge. And I'm going to do the same negative 20 that I did inside of Fusion. Go ahead and lock that in. Then I'm going to create a sketch on the bottom side of this plane. You'll notice Inventor automatically has an option to project in the origin point, so I don't have to go and project that on my own. I'm going to go lock a circle in on that point, drag this out to be 2 inches, and then I'm going to finish the sketch. I don't need to see the plane anymore, so I'm going to right click on it in the browser and say visibility. And now I can extrude that. So I'm going to start the extrude command. And Fusion Automa or Inventor automatically found that closed profile. Uh, I don't want it to be a solid. I want it to be a surface. So I'm going to choose that option. And then I have other options that I can choose, like symmetric. I could change the length. But in this case, that's good enough. As long as it goes to the part, that's all I need. I'll right click on that again and say I want to turn the visibility off. So we'll right click on the surface, save visibility and now that uh, surface has disappeared. We're ready to do some face splitting. Um, same basic concept, a little different tool names inside of Inventor compared to Fusion, but I'm gonna choose the, the split command. First thing it wants to know is what's the split tool. It's gonna be that surface extrusion that I just created. And then what are my faces? So we'll start off by the inside face and I'll hit okay. And now I can go and use the thicken offset command here. Uh, I need to toggle back and forth between those two for some reason. But I'm going to go ahead and click on that face. Say I want to do a cut, and I want to go the other direction with it, so we'll click on that option. And now when I hit OK, you can see I have my, my first notch on this tube. And then I'm going to split again using the same extrusion. This time we're going to split the outside face. Hit OK. And now we can do the thicken offset. Grab that little region right there. It's going the wrong direction, so we'll just flip it in and say we want it to be a cut and hit OK. And now we've basically duplicated the example that I had in Fusion 360. Here's where Inventor has some more robust tools that'll help us with the next steps. Um, I'm gonna put one more sketch on this part just to help us out. So I'm gonna put a 2D sketch on this back face. I want these two lines just to be construction, so I'll toggle them to construction. And then I'm gonna place a point somewhere on here. Now, I don't wanna put it exactly at that point. I'm gonna drag off a little bit so that I can use the vertical horizontal constraint or the vertical constraint in Inventor uh, between those two points. And now I have that point locked in. Now what I'm ready to do is take this part file and convert it to a sheet metal file. So I'm gonna choose Convert Sheet Metal. And uh, Inventor wants me to say what it is, what, what's the face that I wanna make my flat pattern of. So I'm just gonna click on the outside face. And then what is my sheet metal rule that I wanna start out with? So um, I'm just gonna choose default here, and the thickness is set to 0.1. Now I do wanna make one small change here. I wanna edit the sheet metal rule, and I'm going to go to the K factor value again and change that to be one. And I'm running at a really weird resolution. So there it is. So we'll say save and close, and apply and cancel that. And now I'm ready to do some things to turn this into a sheet metal part. To be able to unfold this, there has to be a tear or a rip going through here so that there's a gap, um, there's a seam. So you'll notice that in Inventor, we have something called the rip command. I'm going to select rip. It wants to know what face do I want to rip. I'm going to say I want to rip that face. Where's my rip point? Let's use that sketch point that we created. Now Inventor automatically adds a gap between those two faces based on the sheet metal rule. I can go ahead and hit OK. And now I can simply go and say that I'd like to go and make a, a flat pattern. And Inventor unfolds my part, and there's my flat pattern that I can make a drawing of or save a DXF, a DXF of, or whatever I want to do. So 
Um, Inventor has some more robust sheet metal tools that allow us to do things like sheet metal rip, ripping at a minimum or converting a normal part into a sheet metal part so that I can rip it and do some of the things with it. Uh, one last part of this video, I'm gonna show you where you can go and maybe we can uh, get Autodesk to implement these features uh, with your help and your voice. All right, so you might be thinking right now, great, I know how to do this in Autodesk Inventor. However, I don't have Autodesk Inventor, so why did he just show me that? The reason I showed you that is I wanted to show you that Autodesk knows uh, how these sheet metal tools should work, and you, you have a voice in how Fusion 360 can be developed. So everybody can go out to this website called forums.autodesk.com, and log in, you all have a login with your Fusion 360 account that will get you in here. And if we come through and look at all the products that Autodesk has, you're gonna see one called Fusion 360. I can go ahead and click on that. And then there's gonna be different forms uh, underneath here, which are excellent for getting help should you need it. But the one that I wanna concentrate on is the Fusion 360 Idea Station. This is where you can go to submit ideas um, and other users will can come along and vote on them. And as, use, as ideas get more votes, they're more likely to get implemented by the developers. So what I did is I went out, if you filter by latest ideas, I went out and I created a Fusion 360 idea already. So you go find this idea and I'll put a link or a card in the video here and it's called Improved Sheet Metal Tools. So while you're logged in with your account, all you need to do is go ahead and click on the vote button. I'll click on this so we can see what, what I wrote inside of here. Um, but I just, I asked for more robust sheet metal tools to be implemented inside of Fusion. Um, the ability to convert a part to a sheet metal part, a rip tool, a corner seam tool, etc. You can read the rest on your own. Um, but if we can get some votes on these, two, three, four hundred votes, it's very likely that Autodesk will take this more seriously and potentially add these tools into the product that we need so that you all can do things like take cope tubing uh, rip them and create paper templates that are very easy to create instead of sort of the workaround method that I had to show you how to do. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you have any questions, please leave them below. If you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't like it, give it a dislike. And uh, if you found this helpful, it'd be great if you could subscribe. Thanks for watching.